I react if I had to, put some things in the past too, and don't let them distract you, but react if you have to. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Wednesday night stream. This is number three or four, I can't remember, but thanks so much for hanging out with me Wednesday, 9 p.m. Like I said, we're going to be doing these streams pretty much weekly um, as I've decided to bring this back, uh, I guess, permanently. I miss streaming, so we're doing it. Hope everybody's doing really well. We'll just go ahead and do like we always do, jump into the chat to start off and see who we got in here so bob casey maury peter james will edc carmelo b man andrew londonard tyson we got fly high wisconsin uh b man asks, what's the beer of choice this evening i figure we'll try it again try to redeem myself we'll take the sweet baby java that we started with yesterday and try not to spill it all over the place this time if i spill it it's a really bad deal because all the electronics are up here. So hopefully we're not going to do that. Got Brad, uh, Brad Hendo, Steve Edwards. How are you doing? Eddie Nunez. Hey, Eddie. Um, I still have yet to ship that Tiny Hawk. It's coming, I promise. I'll definitely make sure I make it to the post office tomorrow. It's just been a crazy week. So I'll definitely get that out. Hopefully the audio is coming in nice and um, clear. It's crisp. I haven't checked it. So I'm just going to rely on the fact that if I can hear the music, Typically, that means I can hear the audio as well. And somebody just said, sweet baby Jesus. So maybe they, they heard that. I don't know. But, oh, man. Yeah, no no alcohol abuse this evening. We're, we're not going to be spilling any beer. That's that's the goal. Don't spill the beer. Um, Thomas O'Sullivan, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see all of you. All right. So check it out. Um, you know, it's sort of been slow in, in drone news. But really quick, just do a little bit of housekeeping. I want to talk really swiftly about something that I'm doing over at Half Chrome's channel. If you haven't already checked out Half Chrome, I am doing a um, sort of like a fast news segment that's going to be taking place. Right now, we're doing once a week uh, episodes. It, the episodes are literally like five minutes. And basically, what I'm going to do is give you the rundown of the drone news, all the important highlight stuff, if, if it felt like it was noteworthy it's going to be in that segment that's going to be hosted over at half chrome people have asked me why i haven't i don't host that on my channel and honestly i i do so much content now i i just don't have a spot for it so half chrome's channel is absolutely perfect for something like that so we're doing the whole thing if it looks very fpt ish that's sort of because it was somewhat inspired by by that um style of of news delivery so um, check that out. We just released our first episode on that. So constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, I, I've made some tweaks to it. So hopefully episode two will be much better. We're going to film that this um, this week. So we'll have that over there as well. So really looking forward to doing more of that because it's really fun to just, just sort of haphazardly read off the news in like under five minutes. Um, it's it just makes it so much more enjoyable than sitting watching a video for 10 15 minutes and watch somebody ramble on about one topic this way you guys get three or four topics all in one you know one swift go so check that out that's half chrome drones um all right so a couple of things we'll, we'll talk about this dji aeroscope deal um so dji is really 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 been coming up with solutions over the past couple of days to combat this impending remote ID that obviously we know is inevitable. And uh, March 2nd is coming up rather quickly next week. So if you haven't already got your comments in, I've said this over and over, be sure to do so whether you think it's going to matter or not. You know, if you, if you don't do it, don't complain about it afterwards. You know, it's just like elections and, and voting. If we don't, if you don't let your voice be heard, you can't complain about it afterwards. So um, that's like my little tangent on that, but so Aeroscope, what is it? Have you guys seen this video? Um, DJI released it. Aeroscope's been around for a while. It's a way for them to identify aircrafts and it uses a, um, an RF transmission signal similar to, uh, what we use to communicate with our drones via our controller. So it's technically a form of wireless, uh, Wi-Fi. 
Um, and it's totally free. It's already built into basically every drone has an RF uh, transmission. So whether you use Altel, whether you use whatever, you heard me complain about a universal solution that drone to phone wouldn't be a universal solution. Well, Aeroscope sort of is a universal solution because it's utilizing signals that already exist on almost everything that is RC related, which is pretty cool. So they're touting this as a free solution. It also doesn't give up a lot of critical data beyond just the ID of the drone, which most drones already have a digital ID, but it would at least let pilots and let ground stations know where a, a drone is. So um, I would highly, highly suggest, you know, check out this video. So I'll just flip over to the desktop scene here and open up, where is it? Shit, I go, I went ahead and disabled it. Oh, well, now you guys are just seeing the stream. So let me flip back here. Let me find Aeroscope. I had it open here. I may have closed out of that window. Let's, um, uh, let's find Aeroscope. Cause it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, I guess it's cool that they are trying, but I mean, somebody's going to try to capitalize on this financially. That's why I put that title. Would you pay for remote ID? If somebody brought a solution to, uh, you know, to the forefront and said, Hey, you know, we have the solution. It's going to cost you, let's say nine ninety nine a month. Would you pay for that? If it was uh, a non-intrusive solution, I mean, somebody's going to try to capitalize on this no matter no matter what i'm trying to find where it is oh here it is so i'm just going to mute that because i don't think it's really important to have that up here but let's go ahead and flip over desktop scene so this is uh dji aeroscope and like i said it already exists on the drones now and subsequently this video is actually receiving more likes and dislikes than their previous video that video was horrendous probably their most disliked video ever um, but if you haven't already seen this video, it's, it's pretty, you know, informative. And I wouldn't say I really would backtrack my idea of remote ID, but I think this is a little bit better of an approach. And I wish they would have leaned in with this to start off with. I don't know why they didn't go this route first, but yeah. So let's, uh, let's just jump in the comments here so I can take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's all about the beer. I, I agree. We've all, you know, I paid my 150 for a 107. You know, I mean, I, I I agree. But like I said before, if you want to be in this hobby, it seems like there's always going to be some sort of hurdle that you're you're going to need to get over. I mean, it it is it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, I I'll definitely say this is probably the least expensive hobby that I've ever had. I think paintball was probably more expensive because it was like a weekly pay in occurrence, but, um, you know, they're, they're saying that this would be free, like this option would be free. So the reality is, I don't think it's going to get kicked down entirely. I don't think we're going to be able to beat it entirely. It's, I just don't see that happening. I don't think they're going to give way to it completely. So there's going to have to be some sort of solution. And, and what they have proposed within this video uh, is the best approach, I guess, best way to approach this, better than what their drone to phone was. I mean, this is the best I've seen so far. So I'll be sure to um, drop this. I'm going to drop this in the chat here. So if you guys want to check it out so you can listen to it for yourself, I mean, good information. Um, so you guys can check this out for yourself. Um, so you can make your, you know, formulate your own opinion on this. Um, that's, that's what I want you guys to do with all these videos. All these takeaways is, you know, formulate your own opinion, you know, just because I get pissed off or upset with, with this remote ID doesn't mean you necessarily should be upset about it as well. So you have to be able to formulate your own opinion, um, with all of this. And yeah, uh, Steve Lawrence says nothing is free. And that's true. Nothing's going to be free. There's going to be some charge or some fee that they will inevitably charge to be able to put all this together, um, which sort of sucks, but it is what it is. I think, I mean, if it's nine 99, I mean, it's not terrible. Obviously it doesn't beat free, 
but it's not terrible. You know what I mean? I, I think I can live with that. I'll just add it to the, all the other 999s that I seem to be paying this year. So yeah, that's, that's aeroscope. Um, I don't know. Mixed feelings about the whole thing. Um, Tundra says greedy bastards. Yeah, they, it, it is greed. Um, but it, I don't, I don't necessarily know if it's the FAA being greedy. It could be, you know, companies like, you know, you got Kitty Hawk and Air Maps that obviously their eyes lit up with dollar signs over all of this. So you have a lot of third party companies that want to be the ones that are capable of managing this data. And because they want to manage this data, they're going to stand to make a lot of money because somebody has to pay them to house that data. Um, it, it's, it's one big cash grab, really. One big cash grab, which really, really sucks. Really, really sucks. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm amazed that David Walker says, I'm amazed it's the FAA wants remote ID, but you're sitting around almost insulting what DJI is offering. Maybe you'd prefer the FAA way. Wouldn't say we're necessarily insulting what DJI is offering. We, I insulted the fact that they wanted to give up a pilot's privacy and location with their first concept. It was just a concept. Doesn't mean we have to like their concept. I'm very much, I take the line of approach that fuck you i don't have to accept anything you say or provide me i don't care this is a hobby so at the end of the day i don't have to accept that i can hang up my drone tomorrow pick up my camera and still and still make money without my drone so i really don't care either way when it comes to that but their first concept was absolutely egregious to even think that you would allow anybody to know my location was stupid and, and there's no justification for any of that. This, the aeroscope approach makes a lot more sense. It's a lot more feasible approach. It already exists. It can be used on multiple brands of drones, not just DJI. And again, all of this is just concept. And even if tomorrow the FAA said, you know, we're going to do this, what DJI says, we're still two years out from seeing this all actually implement it. It's going to take time. So I mean, the reality is the, the, the problem I have is when people start drinking the Kool-Aid and just accept it because they think, well, oh, it's, it's, this is free. This is obviously the best option. There's editors and softwares and all sorts of things that are available to me to create videos that are free, but I will not use them because they suck. So if somebody's going to say to me, hey, we have an option that's going to be better for you and you had to pay $9.99, I would do that if it's a better option. But I think there should be multiple options. I don't think there should just be one option. I think the DJI option is, is great, but I think there should be multiple avenues that pilots can choose to go through. That's, that's just my opinion on that. But we'll have to see what they rule and what they decide to do with this as, uh, as they, you know, sort of fine tune their concepts. So, but they want it to, so you're talking about their identity, but I'm talking about the fact with the very first concept drone, the phone is that they would identify where a pilot was the, where the, the ground station was actually located. That's, that's what they shown in that video that they would allow you to identify where the pilot was. I mean, they should have, thank you, TNT Rocky. Uh, they, they should have been a lot more clear and they probably wouldn't have received so much disgruntledness. But again, it's, it's not that DJI is a business. So it's, it's them saving face at this point, trying to put out, you know, solutions to be able to keep their drones in the air. Again, our government, the U S government doesn't want Chinese manufacturers. That's any Chinese manufacturer flying in our airspace. So they're trying to find ways to make things transparent, to make it secure, to make it safe so they can get obviously their crafts back up in the air and in the hands of working professionals, which I agree with. I never saw anything wrong with, with them being used for, you know, government work. I never saw any problem with it. Security analysts, confirmed that there was nothing malicious happening on DJI drones, but the federal government sees otherwise. And it all ties back to, you know, some of the things that we're seeing with drone the phone ties back to that. Let's 
So uh, Jaber says, everyone does not need that much info. Law enforcement, FAA, okay, but not the public. Well, and, and, you know, here's my thing. Even with law enforcement, I still feel like that it should be a process of they need to ask you for the information. It just shouldn't be readily available for them. Again, I, you know, and I'm not a commercial pilot, you know, f you know, by, you know, in terms of flying aircraft beyond a drone, but I don't know how they treat this, if they treat this differently. You know, since 9-11, things get treated differently as far as aviation goes. So maybe if 9-11 never happened or anything like that, we're in a whole different world, but unfortunately it did. And they treat this all differently. So maybe it's not treated like a motor vehicle where you have to be pulled over and, you know, provide information. So it's, 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 you know, a difficult choice. Uh, not what was meant. Uh, yes, they got it wrong in the video. Hijai and Ark are exactly in the same lines. Their mistake, but not their intention. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not their intention. And I'm glad that they issued a statement on that. And I mean, it's good to see that they are trying to put out a solution, but here's, here's the thing about putting out a solution right now until we know what the FAA is, is going to do. I don't know if they're actually going to really take anything serious. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, <laughs> I, I think about it how, like when I was a kid, I would get in trouble with my, with my parents. And, you know, after I got in trouble and I knew, I knew I was going to, you know, something was going to come down. I was going to ground it or something. I would do whatever I could at that point to try to get myself out of hot water. And I would try to develop solutions after I was already in trouble. And I actually didn't know what the punishment would be. So the same, same sort of analogy, weird analogy, but we don't know what the FAA is going to say. They may read these comments and, and take a whole different approach. We don't know. Chances are they're probably going to line up with, you know, what they had thought to begin with, but we don't know what they're going to do. So I would say maybe it's a wait and see type of thing. Again, after March 2nd is, is when we will see, we will see what's going to happen. Um, there is a rally going on in Washington, DC. I believe it's Friday or Saturday, I think it's Saturday, um, there's a, um, a, I guess a protest, if you want to call it. I, I'm going to call it a rally. I don't like the word protest necessarily, but uh, we'll call it a, a rally going on in DC. So if you want to voice your opinions, if you're around the, the DC area, I would say go, you know, head on over there, leave your drone behind, obviously, but go over there and see what it's all about. They're, they're sort of protesting um, this whole thing. So that's my 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 stitch on aeroscope i don't think it's terrible i think that's their better approach i think that's their best approach so far so far john h thank you very much man i really do appreciate it lon says all federal agencies including the military had to ground all commercial drones because they were not vetted dvf thank you yeah but specifically if you read that that memo that they put out i mean they were they were sort of targeting dji or anything you know, that wasn't made here in the U S which is not, we don't have a lot made here, obviously, but, uh, I, I think they'll get around that. I think they'll fix that. And I think that, you know, as DJI keeps becoming more transparent, it's going to be more helpful for the future of them here in the States and just around the world. I mean, I, I like, I like some of the things that they've been doing lately. You know, I mean, again, I like the fact that they want to tackle this issue first. Like they're not worried about new products right now. Their main goal is to figure out a way to, you know, keep, I wouldn't say the hobby, but keep the industry alive. And, you know, the least amount of, I guess I won't say regulation, but regulation as possible, which is good. Um, I would love to, you know, to talk with Brendan Schulman uh, one day, you know, about some of the things. Cause I mean, he's sort of, this is all he eats, sleeps and breeds is, is this. So. We'll have to see. All right, mate. Get some rest, David. I forgot you're overseas. Uh, I'm fearful that this will shut down the hobby. I really love drones, but uh, would have to move to RC cars. I, you know, here's the thing. Don't freak out now. Like, don't hit the panic button. You know, so so often in every single hobby or everything that we ever have, like, everybody worries about what they don't know. Like people were thinking 
you know, not to get political, but people were thinking Trump got elected as president. There's going to be World War Three. Guess what? There's not a World War Three. And we all still wake up, put our pants on the same way and still go to work and we're all still fine. So it's, it's one of those things. Like I try not to fear the unknown. Things always have a way of working themselves out. The reality is there is a massive industry. This is going to piss me off. This thing keeps going to sleep. There's a massive industry that makes a tremendous amount of money for multiple companies. And the fact is they're not going to kill a hobby. They're just, they're just not going to do it. There's too much money. Again, they get five bucks every time somebody signs up. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but think about it. That's free. What does it cost them to have somebody go on their website and, you know, register, um, to, to, you know, register their drone. It, it, it doesn't cost them anything. They have the website. They're making $5 every time somebody clicks that button. They're making $150 every time somebody registers to become a professional pilot as a 107 pilot. And there's a lot of people that take that very seriously and do pay those fees to register as a pilot. So there is so much money for them to lose. So trust me, they are definitely thinking and taking all of this into consideration. I think it's a little dr drastic. People say it's ending the hobby. And if you see videos like that, you know, it's sort of clickbaity, you know what I mean? Because it's not proven that it's going to end the hobby. People are being a little bit dramatic with that. Is it essential to get your comments in and voice your concerns? Absolutely. But it's not going to end the hobby. There's just going to be limitations, not going to end the hobby. It's just, that's, that's just a little too dramatic for me. All right. So let's, let's jump into uh, the comments here and just take a look. So uh, Corona was created by the Chinese government for population control. I don't know about all that, but it's a pretty crappy situation over there. I mean, I can't even imagine what what's going through some of these people's minds over there and the fact that they still haven't been able to stabilize um, the environment over there is just is alarming. And a lot of people, I think, are going to find that things that we need and rely on from China are going to come to a screeching halt because they're going to be behind in production this entire year. It's going to be really interesting to see. Um, yeah, I don't think that website cost them very much. It's pretty, uh, pretty pathetic to be honest with you. Um, uh, but I digress. I digress. You know, it's, and it's, and you know, we talk about people keep talking about, you know, asking when, when's the Mavic three, when's the Mavic three, you know, with or without coronavirus, I think it would, would not be at all this year until they figure out what they're doing with this, um, NPRM. I just think that they're going to take their time, figure this out. So they don't put a massive investment in a drone that people can't, you know, enjoy or have for multiple years. Like the Mavic two is still a perfect drone to purchase today. Perfect drone to purchase today. Yeah, the money that the government does make on sales tax from drones is massive. That's something that is an oversight. People don't realize there's there's a lot of money in sales tax. It absolutely is very terrible, Tundra. And that's, that's why I live here. <laughs> that's why I live here. Well, Nate, you're right. The flu does kill more. And that's just because it's, you know, it's on a wider scope, but. You know, it's still, it's still terrible because you can't really fight it because you can't build up any sort of immunity to it because of the genes of the virus. So that's, that's always, that's always terrible. We'll build stuff in India. I'm, Lon, have you ever gotten anything from India? Serious question. Have you ever gotten anything from India? I mean, I, I don't know what's, what they have built over there. I don't know if they have infrastructure there. I, I think they build some phones over there. I think Foxconn has a plant there. I mean, so technically they could. I don't know how much cheaper or if that would be more efficient. I know they would definitely, uh, that would be a, a good avenue for them to go. Uh, considering canceling my trip to Thailand uh, Thailand in uh, May. I'll tell you, I was scheduled, I'm scheduled to go out to NAB, which is a conference in Las Vegas. And I'm actually contemplating canceling going to NAB just because of the vast majority of the manufacturers, the phone manufacturers and 
people that go to these events are from China. And I think a lot of them may pull out because they're not going to be able to go. Look what happened to, um, gosh, what is that? Um, there's a massive phone convention that happens every year. Can't even, can't even think of the name of it. IFA forgot. I forgot the name, but they canceled the show this year because of the coronavirus. So my thought is I'm going to probably pull out of that. I don't want to risk getting sick again. I already got sick when I went to CES and came back. I was terribly sick for two weeks. I don't want to go through that again. So I may, I may just pull out of that altogether. That may be the move. Your Bic lighter, Bic lighter is from India. Not surprising. All right, let's take a let's take a look. Let's take a look. In a reply to the FA, why don't we do like a full scale planes? If you're able to see the plane, let the app only give you the registration number. She's reported to the FSTO. It's an option. It's definitely an option. I don't know if they'll go that route though. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw that warning from the CDC. And yeah, it does it does look pretty bad actually. <laughs> They're warning, they're warning people, um, to wash your hands, you know, multiple times a day. If you don't have, um, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, you should keep sanitizer, keep cleaning your hands. It's obviously, uh, wildly recommended to do that. So Cerveza virus, I, I would be for the Cerveza virus. I had the Cerveza virus yesterday. Spilled the beer everywhere. too hot in this office all right let's jump in the cat i don't really believe in the saving power of those masks yeah i i don't i don't know how well those would actually work either to be honest with you nate i've always been skeptical of those to be honest with you um but some people swear by them some people absolutely absolutely swear by them um uh, shave your beard I shaved my beard. It's gone. There's just stubble there now. I, I lost the battle with the razor. It's gone. Uh, why, why India? Just bring manufacturing back to the USA. I mean, they can do that, Addy, but I think it's because the cost of manufacturing components here, it's going to essentially raise the price of what we already have here. How much? I don't know. I mean, we see the effects on certain products already that are manufactured here, that there are premiums to doing that. So... Plus, in certain situations, there isn't an infrastructure here to mass produce certain products. So that, that would probably be the reason why they wouldn't. All right, let's see what's going on here. You should wash your hands multiple times a day anyway to keep yourself healthy. Yeah, I mean, you should, but not many people do. All right, let's see. Let's go down to here. It's really strange to see people wear a mask in the U S you know, I've seen a lot of people wear a mask when I was at, Wal well, when you go to Walmart, you should typically wear a mask anyways, but I've seen a lot of people wear a mask at the grocery store. I've actually curved going back, to, uh, going out to eat a lot. Um, just because I don't, you know, don't want to be around that many people. Oh, CDC says shave your beard. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. It's good to know now. Maybe I'll keep the beard gone. You're right, though. You know, beard holds germs. But yeah, and I think that's that's probably part of the reason why we're not going to see a lot of products, you know, ready to roll. Um, so there's two pending releases right now that should be making their way to us shortly. Uh, one is the Evo 2, and then the second one would be, what the heck is it? The Evolve. The Evolve drone is supposed to be released. And that one, I don't know if that's going to be on schedule either. They tease that daily and regularly, regularly as well. But I don't know if that one's going to be on time as well. I'll have to, I got to reach out to them and ask them if they are going to be hindered by that at all. Um, we'll have to see. But it's going to be a pretty, I think it's going to be a bleak year for new releases. Last year was pretty quiet all the way up until the end. I think this year will be exceptionally quiet. Not a bad thing because it means it's going to be a lot cheaper of a year. But man, um, one sec, guys. I want to get this sweater off. Whew. It was super cold and now it's it got really hot. This computer, when you start streaming, man, it just pumps out the heat. 
absolutely just pumps out the heat. It's crazy. It's utilizing like 60% of the CPU. It's nuts. All right, let's see. Let's see. Mike Roche, not true. True, not time to panic just yet. Yep, definitely not time to panic. Evo 2 looks like an upgrade for me this year, possibly upgrading. I think it's going to be a phenomenal upgrade. And um, I know a lot of people were on the fence of whether to get the Skydio 2 or an Evo 2. You know, if this thing can ship within the next month or so, I think that that's definitely going to be the right move for many people. Um, it, it checks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. It really does. Um, when you look at obstacle avoidance, when you look at flight time, when you look at camera quality, and then the ability to swap cameras, I mean, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. So I think, I think that would be the way to go. Um, but on the flip side of the coin is that all these delays are actually really good for Skydio because it makes people want to purchase that product because that is an option that is available right now. And people have FOMO. That's a real deal in the drone world. Uh, people don't want to miss out. So they'll make a purchase of the Skydio 2 because that is already out. And by this point, they should be shipping pretty quickly. I think they're fulfilling most of the orders as it is. Osmo Cinema, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about the Osmo Osmo 2 or Osmo Cinema. But uh, David, the Skydio to me, for me, was unless you have a very specific purpose for it. If you have a specific purpose for it, yeah. Um, oh, Paul, um, probably not for a little bit because we have to do a lot of sound treatment. We also have to paint and we got to tint and get in, get insurance on the building. So that way all of our gear and everything is safe. We also want to put build like a, um, a gear safe just to prevent, you know, if we leave cameras or drones behind, we can lock everything up. So probably we're about a m month and a half, two months from moving into the new studio. So I'm pretty stoked for that. That's going to be absolutely epic. Uh, when that's all done, I'll have a lot more space than I'll have about three times the space that I have right now to be able to lay things out, which is going to be great. A lot more room for uh, for uh, for all the stuff we have in here because right now this room is very very cramped. Plus side though, with this room being so cramped, it's pretty much sound sound treated at this point. But the new place will be much better. All right, so let's jump in this. Uh, so yeah, fly high. I think you'll love the smart controller. Like I said, I love that thing. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite things from 2019 is the smart controller i didn't think i was going to like it at first but the more and more i use it every time i fly anything else it just doesn't feel the same as using the smart controller and a lot of people were asking me they said well how because I, I i made a mention about um so when i work with realtors or project or construction managers i give them a a monitor i give them a monitor to witness what's happening on the screen. And I don't give them a monitor with an HDMI cord. Like I can sit in my truck and fly and they can sit in their truck and still watch from the screen and have me on the phone telling me what angles that they wanna see. I've devised like this crazy um, setup that is absolutely phenomenal for if you're working with project managers or let's say you're dealing with a realtor that's like really heavy over your shoulder this thing is freaking outstanding. I got to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. Okay, so this is a really, it's, it's sort of expensive to do this, but let me move my beer out of the way. So first things first, you need to have, like if you wanna be able to have somebody watch what you're doing, but you don't want them to be tethered to you, you need something like this. So this is a monitor, basically it's a field monitor. And what I have mounted to the field monitor is a Hollyland receiver. So this is a Hollyland receiver. It has right around a mile-ish range. It gets a little laggy after a mile, but it can go pretty far. You can also get bigger antennas. So I hand this to the realtor or I hand this to the project manager, they can watch what's happening on the screen. And then on my smart controller, I have this. 
So this is the highly land, this is the transmitter. And what I do is I take the lift door and I just sort of attach it like this, just like that. So then I have this at the first end and then I just plug this into my HDMI and there we go. So this is what I transmit. I transmit my signal here. Like what I'm seeing on my camera, I transmit, transmit that to the monitor and the, the realtor can see what I'm doing. Or let's say if I'm dealing with like, I don't know, I've even done it um, for a homeowner. They wanted to see what I was doing and I hand them that and there they go. Or in most instances, like let's say I'm dealing with thermals or something. Um, I would hand this over to the project manager, like the roofer or something. And they would be able to like point me in the right direction because they understand what they want, but they can't fly the drone because they are not the, you know, the pilot. They don't have a license, but this monitor setup, having this and this lets me, you know, let them sort of be in control without actually being in control. It works really well. And this has sold me quite a bit of jobs actually. And agents love this. They think it's the coolest thing in the world to see what's going on because they're sitting in the house showing the homeowner like I'm flying, you know, they're showing the homeowner all this. And it's just a big, you know, smoke and mirror show, but it does work for a lot of situations. So that's some of the versatility that you get when you get a smart controller or anything like this could even work if you have like a P4 Pro with the... Um, with the smart with the smart screen attached to it, you can run the HDMI out to this thing as well. So, um, I've been using this and it's pretty uh, pretty flawless. So, uh, John, you asked what is no no interference line because the RF signals are different. So, OcuSync's working on its own separate signal, and this is working on its own signal. And you can also channel hop, which is pretty cool. So I can have multiple multiple receivers and channel hop with it. And so if I was getting interference, I can just channel hop. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll be sure to include a link down below where you guys can check out this receiver. So the Hollyland receiver, this is the 600S and it was actually designed for filmmaking. I'm using it for something that it's not necessarily intended to use, but it works phenomenal. And there's almost zero lag on these receivers. So whoever's watching the screen, gets you know maybe within milliseconds it's pretty cool so i've been i've been contemplating um yeah it would work on the crystal sky yes i've tested it on the crystal sky and it works so a setup like this the hollyland receiver costs about 450 bucks 450 it's expensive but they're worth it because they're really good um, and then the mount you're going to pay about 79 bucks for that mount and then what i did was I just went on Amazon and got like just a generic sort of um, ball mount. I mean, you can get these here for like seven, eight bucks just to mount this sort of in a way that somebody can hold it like this. And then the other thing that you will need is Sony NP batteries and the NP batteries, they cost 30 bucks. So, I mean, you're in it for a little bit, but the reality is something like this can make you a lot of money if you're dealing with somebody that does mapping, if you're dealing with construction guys that want specific thermals, if you're dealing with somebody that they're, they're looking for something, but they need to be the eyes and you just have to be the pilot. So there's definitely a lot of, um, lot of use for this. Um, it's probably my favorite little utility that I've made so far. So I'll do, um, I'll do like a full, video on this to show you guys sort of the range i have a property that i have to do um, tomorrow so i was going to take this with me and do a video on that so um, you get normal range with with okay so the transmission signal is about a mile a um, little less than a mile it just depends on the area that you're in um brad that's the desk view that's the desk view uh or i'm sorry best view monitor i'll make sure to include a link for that you can use any monitor I just chose this monitor um, specifically uh, because, well, I had it sitting around, but it's also really bright. It's like 800 nits of brightness. So it's 800 nits of brightness, which is great. Or you can use, yeah, if you have the 2200 uh, nit field monitor, that's even better. That's even better. Use that. That's absolutely incredible to have that. The other thing too is like if you're, let's say if you're flying and 
you're by yourself and you want to get a better view, but you still don't want to be tethered to a cable or have this crazy contraption coming off. That's where this works really well. Sometimes I'll just put the receiver in my pocket or I'm sorry, the transmitter in my pocket and just, you know, walk around and the realtors, you know, in the house or something. So, you know, there's a lot of use cases for that. So I'll be sure to list it all down below. Like I said, I'm going to, uh, get a, um, get a video up on this so I can demonstrate bef because before anybody like thinks, Oh, I want to go buy it. Let me show you what you can actually do with it before you waste any money, because you may see it and be like, ah, maybe it's not as useful as I thought. So, you know, because if you make a commitment to buy any of that stuff, you know, you sort of, you just sort of spent almost 700 bucks basically. Exactly. It is peace of mind for the nutty clients. It's peace of mind for the nutty neighbor too. So if you think about it like this, let's say you've got an aggravated old lady across the street, you hand her this monitor and say, Hey, do you want to see what I see? Because if she thinks, Oh, you're spying on me, say here, here's a monitor. You can watch what I see. And right away you have defused that situation and you no longer have a pissed off neighbor anymore. And now they think you're the coolest uh, little uh, weird dude in the world. So yeah. Um, so Brad says, I'm currently forming a drone videography, photography, LLC. So here, here's my advice for you on an LLC. Wait until you got a good amount of clients under your belt before you form an LLC, because as soon as you do, you're going to have to pay taxes. You're there. There's, there's a lot of like hidden, hidden fees that you have to pay. It's a good idea to form an LLC, but make sure you have a good amount of business under your belt to, to warrant having an LLC. Cause it, it's going to hit you at the end of the year. Um, I found, I found out all sorts of interesting things as I was setting mine up. I waited a long time to do it. I should have did it sooner, but, um, I'm glad I finally did it, but I wanted to wait till I got to a certain point before I did it. So that's one of the, <laughs> we're just fighter. Jordan, you're a mess, dude. You're worse than me. Just fighter. Jordan's like, I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm just going to fight you. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, that's, that's the uh, smart controller setup. And again, if you have a crystal sky, it's going to work just the same. So 2200 nits and, uh, is, is incredible. I have that monitor as well. And it's just a little bulky. That's the only reason why I didn't use that. Uh, but otherwise I would totally use that. The other thing I can do is if I'm dealing with, so the reason why I like this monitor specifically is because if I'm shooting in D log, I can put LUTs, I can put a LUT into the uh, monitor. So the agent sees what, like what the final look is going to be. So that's another, you know, invaluable tool is if you're using something like this, where you can load LUTs into it, you can show them exactly what it'll look like when it's all said and done, which is perfect. It's huge because people don't understand, like agents don't understand what log is. They just see the final product think you thinking you sprinkled some pixie dust on everything to make it look great. And, uh, Bob's your uncle. So not Bob Casey, but you know, the other Bob. So, all right, enough about that controller. So I am going to try to bring some guests onto the show. I think I've got the streaming down. I think I've mastered the the streaming. I had a little bit of issue this morning with the start screen, but I think for the most part, I'm able to, I should be able to bring people onto the stream, which I think will be great. I think having, you know, somebody else on the stream once in a while, not all the time as a stand-in, but bring somebody on once in a blue moon is going to be fantastic. And it'll also change the dynamic um, of, of the show. I don't know what to name the show. So, you know, maybe I should have you guys name. We need a name for this. I, I, I want to have like, you know, it's own, like its own little thing. So definitely need to have, figure out a name, something not so cliche, um, but we'll figure that out. All right. So let's, let's take a look here. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to build credibility as starting off in the new drone business. I felt the best way to make more money is limited. LLC won't make you any more legitimate because the reality is uh, most agents don't ask you if you're an LLC. They don't care about that. The formation of the business, the naming of the business, you can have the coolest graphics, you can have the neatest shirts, the best business cards, and 
they don't give a shit. This is what agents care about, how much you charge and how fast you can get it done if you wanna go the route of real estate. So my best advice to you if you wanna get into the business and work with agents is be quick and have a really reasonable price. Do a couple of gigs for them for free, do some pro bono things, sort of you know, give them a taste, get them hooked. You gotta be a, a photography drug dealer essentially. Get them hooked and then, you know, work from there and then you can start building the formation and the foundation of it. you got to have a good foundation before you build the, the the facility so it took me a year and a half to actually do that and it's still not what i want it to be it's you're always you're always grinding unfortunately but it is it, it is what it is in that um see so yeah you know, the thing, Addy, you know what I, what changed the game for me for streaming? What's up with these lights? It's like stranger things going on here. All right, let me try this again. What changed the game for me streaming is using the software I'm using now. It's, it's, it's affordable, it's simple, and it just, it works incredibly well. So... I mean, and I don't have the best internet, but I think I have this pretty much tuned, tuned to a certain extent where I think it's, I think it's working well. Like my thing is I, I never wanted to stream because my fear was after the stream was over, nobody would be able to watch it because the quality and the audio would be so bad that it's just not enjoyable. And then all you end up doing is, is deleting it. But with this, this is almost as good as an upload. This is almost as good as an upload and I'll, I'll just leave it there. Um, so yeah, <laughs> behind the scenes, YouTube stream setup. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I, I sort of tweeted out like a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. Hey Jake, thanks for stopping in, man. Um, I, I, I tweeted out, I put some behind the scenes stuff up on the story, just sort of like the setup, but basically what I use for every stream is a Sony a6100. I have a Elgato HD 60 Pro that is directly on the motherboard. And that can take in a 1080p 60 signal. And then I just let it all process. So it, it just, it works pretty well. And then I have a battery pack. So, or not a battery pack. I have an AC adapter built in. So that way nothing dies in the middle of a stream. So really simple, but I'm super, super like neurotic about the quality of the video, the final product. I'm like really neurotic. I'm really neurotic about colors. I wish you, I wish you guys saw when I, when I edit some of these videos, like I, I pull my hair out with, with the color in the video. And you know, what's funny is nobody notices. Nobody would ever notice if I did it one way or the other, nobody would notice. So I don't think it's possible for Jake to stay warm. It's what, it's gotta be like, what, 20 degrees up th over there. Uh, I love the stream for channels long way before I qualify, check the channel if you're bored. Yeah, I'll absolutely check it out, man. I'm always interested in checking it out. Um, yeah, I think Kelly's back. I emailed him, he was asking for some clips. He's working on a video. He asked for some clips, so I know he's back. He sent me an email a couple of days ago. Um, so. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to reach out to him. Any ideas on what may be on a new Mavic 2 firmware update when one may come out? You know, you just never know. You never know what they're going to put on the update. You know what update I'm still waiting for is the 24 frames per second for the freaking Mavic Mini. Freaking Mavic Mini. I am still waiting for 24 frames per second. You know, now that I've got a fresh coat of paint on her, I'm ready to take her out for a spin soon. So I'd love a freaking 24. I'm, I'm, I don't know why they have 25. I know that's like a, a European thing, but damn it. I need 24 frames per second. What's going on, Chris? Good to see you, man. Thanks, John, man. I appreciate that. It's good to know. It's always weird when you watch it back on the screen because the aspect ratios on the TVs are different. I try to do my videos are a two to one ratio and this is 16 by nine. So, but it works. I don't know if I can, I don't think I can change this to two to one. 
I don't think it would look good for a stream. Streams are best 16.9, I think. I think I'll leave that alone. Uh, why not manual settings? Uh, dude, I need 24 frames per second before manual. I can deal with this, the, the configuration for it now because it's so, it's so, it's, it's just fast to get up in the air. So like for me, like when I fly the mini, the reason why I fly it at times is because I, you don't really have to think. You don't have to think. You just fly it, get the shot. And now that I put that paint job on there, like I don't even care. Like I was flying it this morning before it started pouring. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, if I crash this, I don't care. But it's so ugly, it came right back. It's so ugly, it came right back. I think trees got out of its way. I mean, yeah. Trees were literally dodging it. It's like, oh, my oh look at that. Disgusting. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Next time I, I, I hydro dip anything, Yes, a neur neurotic 24 frames per second, Bob. Next time I hydro dip anything, I'm going to sand it first. Whoa, thank you, David. Thank you, David. I think, where's, I think I got the mini. I should just keep a bag of everything I want to have on the stream. But, you know, after a week with this, after a week, this has grown on me. This has grown on me. We'll bring it focus. Come on, focus. There it is. Beautiful. Look at it. It's so gorgeous. Like at first you may look at this and say, holy shit, that's a mess. It looked like it was dipped in a volcano and then kicked in an alley. And then somehow it got tangled with a skunk and the skunk lost, got lost in the top of the paint. But then you look deep into its texture and you realize that just beneath the surface is a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery, simplistic and light, 249 grams of fury and power, 2.7 K skin that never peels and an aroma of barely dried paint and mistakes. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's one of a kind. If I ever sell it or auction it, I'm going to start the, the bids at at least $1,000. Don't at me. So yeah, I sort of like it now after, after, you know, a week with it, it's just like, it's like, I don't know. It's like when you first meet the love of your life, you don't really like them at first, but then, you know, the more they hang around, they do things, they cook, they clean. And then, you know, as you look back at it, it's like, you know, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it gets the job done. Now I'm probably dead in the morning. It's fine. It's fine. I'll die in the morning. So, yeah, I should hydro dip the props and then I'll really have some, some issues. But, um, yeah, I mean, if I had to do it again, I probably would have did like a lime color. I don't know why I did red. I should not have did red. But I mean, and the other thing I didn't do was they say to go very, very slow with it. And I did, I think I went too fast and I also dipped it twice. You should only dip it once. Um, yeah, you know, you know, B man, here's the way I think of it, man. You got to stand tall. I draw the line. They walk it. That's it. You just got to do it, man. I think there's enough of spare rooms on, on the internet, the I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm like a cat. I'm going to land on my feet one way or another. It's fine. She's, she takes, you know, everything I say, she's just like, <laughs> I'm going to kill you later. It's fine. It's fine. Um, you can put a skin on it from the decal uh, girl. Um, so funny story. I bought an R2D2 skin for this drone, but I put it on and I'm just like, it looks cheesy. It didn't have the same je ne sais quoi that when you paint it, when you paint a drone, it just is so much more satisfying to the touch. Not this, this is not satisfying, but almost anything else I paint it is very satisfying. Um, but I mean, it's just, now if I go to spin up this year and I take this drone with me, I will not wreck it because I'm going to be like, that's my drone. That's my Mavic mini. 
So, and I don't have to worry about it. If it like ever got stolen, I go to the pawn shop, I can identify that. What's your serial number? No, 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 here you go. I need, a, I need to find this drone. And they're gonna be like, oh God, I've seen that. I know exactly where it is. Here you are, there's your drone. So there is good reason behind this paint job. It was just not intentional. But now that I've seen it and I've had time to, you know, think about it, it's good. I'm glad I stopped with the top and I didn't take it any further because I don't know what, what would have came of this drone if I would have went any further. So just very happy, happy that I didn't, didn't do that. So I used um, Krylon two time it's called. And you know what's funny is the, when you spray the paint in the water, the black and the white was very, very thick. Like that was perfect, but the red was very watery, but yet the whole thing is freaking red. I don't understand it. So. I don't know. I digress. <laughs> I hear you, man. Uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta buy the, uh, the Mavic two. And the reality is they're both gray. You just make one disappear. You replace it with the other one. She's not going to say, is that the Mavic two? She's not going to say that. I mean, you just, you just slide it on in there and just see what happens. And then if you get in trouble, you just blame it all on me. I'll give you my business card, my phone number, and I'll forward, you can just forward it to the complaints department and we'll get back to you in five to six business days. It's fine. It's going to be perfectly fine. It, it all, all works out. Get the DJI prop holder. It comes with lanyards so you can uh, wrap it around your neck. Oh, wrap it around my neck. I don't want to wrap it around my neck. This is perfect. Just as it is. I put this in my pocket and it stains your pocket. Uh, speaking of crackheads, pawn and drones, it's uh, it's a lot of fun flying over them at uh, 200 feet and loitering and watching them scatter. I I can imagine. She, oh, she'll notice the bank account. Yeah, I can't help you with that. You can always say it was fraudulent activity or something. I don't know. Or just try to change the bank account password. Maybe. I think I've just given away too much. Uh, just buy it and she'll never know if you can, you know, somehow embezzle the funds out of your account. Like, you know, you got to do it small, like you got to do it small, like maybe incorporate yourself and then you pay PayPal invoices to yourself, but it goes to your other PayPal. I don't know why I'm this terrible with, with these ideas. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeding into potentially dangerous situations for you guys. I should stop. Uh, but something to that effect only went with decal girl to increase the visibility i'll tell you what once no matter what color this thing is i can't see it once it gets far away yeah jordan don't get me started on boosted board don't even get me started on that so you guys know i bought a boosted board so i bought a boosted board because the skydio 2 and the boosted board has 88 miles it's already broken the motor already went and boosted so boosted says well we'll get back to you in five business days i'm on day right now actually depending on what tick service ticket i'm i'm talking about i'm on day nine right now haven't heard anything back from them and apparently i don't know if the company's going bankrupt but what a great time to buy that board for that video so stupid so stupid it's absolutely unbelievable uh demography now says whatever you did lately you're much better now that you're just saying what you really think. Demography, it's just because I don't give a shit anymore. I think the problem is, in, in most instances, is that people who create online content try to be somebody other than they are, actually are, and that they're afraid that if they say what they really feel, that people won't like them, and that they're not gonna subscribe, or maybe they'll unsubscribe. I'll tell you right now, I went to bed, I was at 22,000, 56 subscribers. When I woke up after that video went live, I was at 22,009 subscribers. So I lost probably 40 subscribers. But if you would have asked me, would you do it again? Would you still say the same things all over again? Absolutely. I would definitely say the same things all over again. And it was totally worth losing 40 subscribers for that video. So yeah. Yeah, what's up with that? What happened? That's weird. I didn't see he he didn't make his appearance at all. I didn't see FPV at all. That is that is very very interesting. 
Yeah, usually he's up, he's up in here like FPV. FPV. Yeah, I didn't see him at all. So part of the reason I enjoy this channel is your honesty doesn't feel so damn scripted. I try not to. The only time I ever script anything is if it's uh, I'm doing an ad spot for a company or I have a lot of information that is very, very critical. Um, and that needs to be like, you know, precise, like 100%. Like when you're dealing with rules or you're talking about regulations, you want to be precise and you definitely don't want to ramble that out. So there you go. All right. So there it is. Uh, we've been streaming for one hour, 10 o'clock. We started at 9 p.m. I think we'll call it a night so I can organize all this clutter and I can prep for a shoot tomorrow. But uh, guys, if there is anything else, be sure you just comment down below. If you haven't already, I'm going to say it. Be sure to like the stream or I will drain all your batteries. <laughs> Fuck Francis. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny every time I see that. Uh, but anyways, that's going to do it and, um, stay original. I'm gonna learn, I should set to let it burn, but my life isn't